All right, March 22nd, 2020. Today is Sunday. We are doing the chores, getting all those wrapped up. Kids are off following tracks, adventuring. I'm gonna go over here and look at the cows. Those four new cows, it's three steers and one little heifer calf we brought in this year. Boy, they've taken to the herd real well. They're doing real well. We've just jarred up the first uh, batch of uh, syrup Dillon boiled down at uh, Sunborn. Yeah, we're over here at Fire Steel. We're on Fire Steel Farm right now. Dillon's been sugaring over in Sunborn Farm, Grandma and Grandpa's. And we put up uh, about six quarts, or uh, I'm sorry, six pints. Not too much yet. Hasn't really gotten going. Hopefully it's gonna be a good year. Today should be a great day. We're going from freezing up to about 41, 42 is supposed to be the high around here today. So we're looking for a good sap run today. We won't be there to collect until tomorrow. But uh, that's going real well. They had pancakes yesterday morning. And uh, the uh, Sun Hive Bee Workshop over in Minnesota, that's been canceled, of course, yeah. So, postponed, it's been postponed. So we'll get there eventually, we'll learn how to make those Sun Hives and then share that with everybody. Really looking forward to that. We're about a month out from the Saskatraz bees coming. Gonna retrofit, gonna augment those Langstroth hives, make them a little more suitable. Can't wait to uh, start that project. That's gonna be happening pretty quick. Here's the herd. Up to 21 head right now, 21 head right now. Hopefully we've got six calves coming we should have six cows that have been bred hopefully we have six calves coming and that's going to bring us to 27 and then there might be two more that we pick up a little later on so looking forward to those bees coming and what else is going on oh yeah the uh, uh i'm gonna do a little bit more in the realm of mushrooms this year. A few years back we did some, I'm not sure the sun's on this. A few years back we did some shiitake and some oyster. Here's, this is Dawn, this is the first calf born on the farm. She's a Dexter. And there's Vasas. That's our bull. He's a Scottish Highland. The boss. We got another cow running back in there somewhere. This is their woodlot they winter in. So, looking forward to doing some more mushroom stuff. We did some up in Sunborn about, oh, it must have been at least five years ago, four or five years ago and haven't had a lot of success. We've ordered uh, bags, indoor mushroom kits from Fungi Perfecti. That must have been six, seven years ago that we've had a little success with. That was a lot of fun. We did a lion's mane, turkey tail, and an oyster, I think. And we're looking to get going again this year. Oh boy, yeah. That's the good stuff. That's his favorite tree. Mm -hmm. So, this year, uh, gonna just be doing shiitake, I think LE46 or something. We're going with the, uh, we're simplifying everything uh, just to cut our teeth on it. And uh, I think LE46, that's kind of the, they, they say the, like, uh, the workhorse of the shiitake strains it's got uh, 
as far as temperature goes, a good fruiting range, really productive, uh, great for the commercial line. So we're going to be trying that. And I, through my research, I found another another company. Field and Forest is who we usually get our stuff through. We've we've worked with uh, well, we've worked with we bought stuff from Fungi Perfecti. That was great stuff. Uh, Field and Forest, which we had minimal success with, but that's that's on us. That's not on them. Their stuff looked great. And uh, now I found another company. Uh, North Spore, they're out of Maine. I think we're still going to get our product, our sawdust spawn, from Field and Forest because they're real close to us and like to. I'd like to uh, use them again. But on YouTube, North Spore had a really great video on inoculating shiitake logs, logs with shiitake spawn. And... That was really cool and uh, had a lot of really great information in it, uh, such as March. March is, I guess, traditionally the time you harvest your mushroom logs. Now, they were getting oak, and I don't know if it was red or white oak. They were getting oak. Uh, around here, some of the best hardwood for shiitake apparently is going to be uh, at least on the list is going to be basswood ironwood sugar maple uh oh boy basswood is a real soft wood i was really surprised to see that on the list but uh, on fire steel we have a lot of basswood and uh in sunborn we have a three acre a little three acre sugar bush out in front of the house right at the front of the farm, and that needs to be thinned anyway. So we got a lot of really good sugar maple. Now, uh, we kind of looking up all the numbers, and it's 25, wait a minute, for every 5.5 pound bag of sawdust spawn, you can inoculate roughly 70 foot of four inch diameter wood. So, we're looking to getting, we're just going to get two bags of 5.5 pound. Oh, he's, he's licking the snow. He likes that. We're just going to get two 5.5 pound bags and we're going to inoculate some sugar maple, probably mostly sugar maple. It's the perfect size over there uh, to thin out and everything. And uh, we're going to go ahead and knock that down. We're going to do about 140 foot of 4 inch diameter logs. And hopefully, maybe in the fall, our seasons are so short up here. I mean, it's 50% it's winter, 50% summer. Very little spring and fall. Uh, hopefully, possibly, we'll get a, a, a flush yeah, in the fall. So we're looking forward to that. I mean, off the off the last batch we did, and I did a lot of things wrong, and it's up on top of a mountain. Sunborn Farm is right on top of a mountain. Uh, it's basically, it's very close to the highest elevation as far as residents go. It's essentially the most elevated house, most elevated property in Michigan. So we're way up on top of a mountain, real strong winds, and... That poses a challenge for some of that mushroom cultivation. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying I haven't figured it out yet. Uh, last year, Heather found a couple of shiitakes growing on some of our inoculated logs, though. So I'll, hopefully we see even more of that this year. And, of course, at Fire Steel Farm, our landscape is very, very diverse. I, I've... Uh, I've been on a lot of farms, I walked a lot of farms. And boy, I mean, we've got we've got pasture, we've got ridges, we've got valleys, we've got ravines, we've got topsoil, we've got clay. 
that's one of the things that we really loved about this piece of property. It is, it's the best piece of property I've ever walked. So I'm very excited about that. And down in those ravines where we have uh, seasonal streams, most of the season, we have a lot of springs coming out the sides of our, uh, the banks on the ravines. We've got ravines that are 70 feet deep, probably at least. And not much wider than that across the top. Very steep, very humid. And uh, we're looking forward to that. So being able to get a water trough down in there, you know, force the logs in water, have a bucket that we can pour over the log, you know, doing something. Whereas before, we're, we were definitely trying to do what Sepp Holzer does and kind of a, because we didn't have experience, it was just kind of a lay and pray deal. I mean, I put them on the ground, I covered them with a tarp, I cut over, covered them with leaves and a tarp in order to get them to, you know, stay moist and humid for a long time to hopefully get the inoculation thorough, quick and thorough. And and then we stacked them for fruiting. Some of them we stacked like cribbing. Others we just stood up on end around the tree. And here, this is fun, yeah. And didn't have a lot of success. Not a lot of success there. So we're going to work on that. It's just a matter of figuring it out. You know, we're not going to give up. Definitely want to figure it out. Up here, we're in the western upper peninsula of Michigan. Up here, you get a piece of land. The most capital you have is timber, is lumber. Woods, a lot of carbon. So definitely we want to learn the mushroom deal so that we can capitalize on a lot of the resource that we already have available right there on the farm. Really looking forward to that. Gonna really make a go at mushrooms this year and hopefully we'll see some next year in regards to that. A lot of other stuff going on. The WD-45, we just put a new clutch in it. Oh, just over a year ago, the clutch gave out on us in the winter as we were plowing snow, it was a terrible deal. And we had bought that brand new clutch plate from, maybe it was a clutch pad from Steiner. And uh, thought we were good to go, we put it in, got all through the season. Now we worked that tractor real hard. I mean, we were, we were moving big round bales, you know, it had a front end loader. We were doing a lot of stuff with it that it's not really meant for. And she finally, she gave out on us, it must have been October. She gave out on us in October. Just took it to, had to haul it two and a half hours to a shop. And they told us uh, it's at least the pressure plate, clutch plate, and maybe the torque tube that went out on it this time. So really not satisfied with the plate we got, the products we got from Steiner. That was a real big disappointment. So we're, we're shopping for a new tractor. We don't, we, that's, it's a can of worms. That WD-45 right now, that thing is a can of worms. And we're going to wait to repair that uh, at a later date. What we're going to do is we're going to find, we've been shopping for new tractors. We're going to shop for some new tractors. And it looks like we're going to be getting an Oliver around the same series as the one we've been using now. Got a lot of experience. Had this Oliver as the very first tractor that uh, my family bought back in the early 90s. And it's still around, still doing a ton of work for us. Really rescued Firesteel Farm last year during hay season. We had a real hard time at the beginning of hay season. 
and uh, it really came through for us. <clears throat> Looking to get another, another Oliver along that same series, diesel powered, really pays off. I mean, the extra money you spend on diesel uh, ma uh, machinery, th those things are so efficient, such a workhorse, really pays off in the long run. So we're gonna be getting another diesel. It's gotta have a front end loader because we gotta be able to lift the bales up and onto the wagon, the trailer, in order to bring them back to the farm. Right now, at, as far as Fire Steel Farm goes, in our family, that's the only farm we use big round bales on. And our farthest hay field is somewhere around five miles away from the house. At Sunborn Farm, it's all old AC roto bales, you know, those little 30 to 80 pound roto bales. You guys spend all day over there, huh? And square bales. So we can trailer those very easily, no problem. Just load them by hand and away you go. But over here, because we farm cattle at Sunborn, it's just sheep and horses. And uh, you know, you can't, you can't really use round bales I just don't trust them. I don't trust big round bales for horses. You know, especially up here, the windows for haying are so short. And there's so much moisture that, you know, moldy hay is, is always something you're trying to avoid and is always something you're ending up with at the end of the season. And anybody that knows horses, you knows you can't, can't feed them moldy hay. That's no good. So definitely stick with smaller bales with them where you, you can get away with it. Is it good? No, you, you would definitely want to try to avoid it. But if cows end up with a little moldy hay, ovines, bovines, sheep end up with a little moldy hay, it's gonna be okay. I mean, you don't, you don't want crazy mold. You don't want to deal with crazy mold. That's no good. But a little moldy hay, you're going to be able to get away with. You definitely want the best hay you can possibly get. Look at this guy here. Can you see him? Yeah, he's in the picture. This is, uh, we got this steer off of our buddy Phil last year. Bought him as a little guy. I mean, look at that guy, huh? Holy smokes. He is really putting on, really producing, you know. That's one of the biggest steers we've ever had. I mean, that guy breeding him over there, he was really figuring it out. He's uh, obviously a Hereford Highland cross, and that's what you got there. Heavy on the Hereford, and he is just a tank. I mean, right now, oh, right now, I would say he is, if he isn't 13, 1400 pounds, I'd eat my hat. I'm usually pretty darn, I'm pretty darn good, I guess, in the critter weight. I've been around a lot of horses. That's where I made my start. Been around a lot of horses. And now quite a few cattle, but boy, look at him. Look at him just filled out full, wonderful. And they, they live in pretty tight quarters right now this time of year. I mean, they've got their hay, free access to all their hay they want. And then they end up sleeping, kind of sleeping in it, sleeping in the muck. But, you know, what cow doesn't during heavy winters like this? But once they get on pasture, boy, they clean right up, look great. Look great. They look manicured. So they're really starting to go through the hay now. Doing a good job. And we're definitely gonna make it. This is the first year we're making it through the winter without any problems. Any problems. Plenty of hay, plenty of hay. Feels good, feels real good. And we still have another 
20 bales sitting off over there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a, a little uh, hay unroller deal, you know, so that we can unroll like Greg Judy does, you know, we're gonna unroll them on the field. And I noticed last year that when I mulched with chaff or loose hay, you know, when the when the baler would drop a bale or not spin it upright or, you know, and you ended up with a lot of, uh, just a pile of loose hay, I'd throw that on the wagon, throw it on hay wagon, load a hay wagon up and bring it back here and put it in high traffic areas, like right around the uh, fences, right around the gates, I'm sorry, the gates. So where I run the cows in and out, they stack up there, they pile there and they wear that area right down to nothing. I started piling it up, mulch there Oh boy, that grass came up thick and green. And uh, that's definitely the thing to do. So we unrolled a couple of bales last year and really loved the results. So everything left over from this year, we are going to unroll onto the fields, really give those fields a boost. And then we're gonna come up and all this manure mixed with hay, we're going to hire in a, um, a local guy with a little caterpillar bulldozer and we're going to push them all up into windrows for compost look at these two these are two that we just picked up this guy looks great i'm really hoping this guy turns into that guy over there i think he might and here's another little guy over here he doesn't he looks pretty angus angus doesn't work out on our on our ground up here on our pastures, Angus just stay kind of long and lanky and they just don't produce very well. They get real tall, real big, but not real heavy. So, but this guy, they had a little problem. They'd been in the, they'd had been in the barn in tight quarters for a little while. Ended up with uh, what looks like maybe a little, maybe some lice or mites or some ringworm. But I mean, they've only been here a week and a half and they're already starting to fur up. You know, out here, our cows, they don't see a building. They don't get under any roofs. They've got woodlots to shelter in and they've got, you know, all the hay they want to eat, all the sun they can absorb. And so far so good. It's really doing a good deal for them. All right, I'm going to work my way out of here. So we got the, I mean, a long talk, right? We got, there, there's another big guy. Here's another steer, market steer for this year. I mean, look at how good he looks. Holy smokes, right? And there's another young one we just picked up. Yep, that's a brand new steer. That's a big Angus we just picked up. I had a hard time telling him because he's already putting on. He's already putting on. I mean, that guy's from a different farm. This guy's from our farm. He's putting on real good. Yeah, big guy. Holy smoke. Can't wait for this season. Can't wait for this market year. So, the bee situation, a little bit of a hold. Not going and doing the sun hive deal. You know, grandma is real excited about the sun hives. Wants to get those sun hives going. So do we. We want to learn about them, get them going. Getting the Saskatraz going. My brother has another farm there. And on my brother's farm, he has, I don't know if they're Italians or Carniolans, Corniolans, Carniolans, but he's got himself, uh, he had three hives and then one was really weak and he tried to requeen. Uh, but the other two hives sound like they've made it through the winter real nicely. So that's a real exciting deal because bees just don't make it through the winter up here. Uh, he didn't do any harvest. He didn't harvest any honey or anything. You know, and there's a lot to be talked about. I can't wait to talk more, but I got a lot of opinions when it comes to honeybees. I've read, I don't know, not every book out there, but I, I don't know, I've read five or six books on honeybees, listened to all the Jacqueline Freeman stuff I could get a hold of, and, uh, you know, you know, have kept bees for three or four years. So, off and on, I got a lot of opinions. So I can't wait to talk about those once we get these going. I can't wait to put my theories into practice and see if I can't make something happen. So, sun is shining. The weather is sweet. It's going to be a great, great 
day every day this week for sap to be running and then we're going to be boiling down making some syrup and looking forward to cutting some mushroom logs we'll definitely film some of that show you that we'll show you some tapping we'll show you some boiling and just what we're up to let us know how things are going comment below hit that subscribe button we'll see you all next time bye bye